being able to draw or interpret a curly arrow mechanism using skeletal formula is absolutely crucial towards A-level success at the very top end. You might think to yourself, why would I ever outline a mechanism in an exam using purely skeletal formula? But we actually do this in a way for electrophilic substitution, just in the regular way of learning it. So how can we apply that kind of understanding to other mechanisms and why is it so important for progress in your exams? Well, hopefully by me outlining the electrophilic addition mechanism using skeletal formula rather than the combination of displayed and structural formula that you can see currently on the screen, you'll be able to see how interpreting this kind of layout when it comes to things like carbocations and curly arrow movement is something really important to support your revision ahead of your examinations in A-level chemistry. So what I'm going to do in the space below just here is outline the mechanism and you'll notice in the original mechanism there's something that you wouldn't usually do and it's a set of orange numbers one two three four all the way through and what I'm doing here is just demonstrating where the individual carbon atoms are and I'm going to do this all the way through just so you can see how the two structures relate to each other with each stage of the mechanism. Now between carbons two and three I need my double bond not a problem there it is and the bromine molecule alongside here doesn't have any changes when it comes to skeletal formula. It's exactly the same. So let's get the dipole on it. And we can now start drawing on our curly arrows. So the curly arrows here are no different. And that's something I really want to emphasize throughout this. It's all about how your organic molecule changes in its appearance that throws people off. So my curly arrow here is going to go from the double bond, same as before. My second curly arrow goes from this bond here onto the bromine with the delta minus. That takes me to my intermediate. And like I said, this is where I think people get confused. Now I'm going to draw out the chain once again. So carbons one and two, there's carbon three, and then up to carbon four just here. And let's chuck the numbers on. Again, we wouldn't do this in the exam, but we're just interpreting what's going on. And what I need to also represent now is the fact that I don't have my double bond. I do have this carbon bonded to a bromine now, which is carbon number three. And I also have this carbon with a positive charge and only three bonds. So that's my carbocation. It's actually a secondary carbocation. So let's first get on the bromine because we mentioned it first. So notice we still show a CBr bond when we are doing skeletal. We're not seeing any of the CH3, any of the CHs and so on. That's absolutely fine because it's clear, it's unambiguous that I'm using skeletal formula here. That means on carbon number two, to maintain clarity, I'm going to put that positive charge as close to that corner, as close to that carbon number two in the skeletal as I possibly can. The next thing is the BR minus here with its lone pair. Again, exactly the same. And I'm going to go straight up here to the carbon, carbon number two, or you can go straight to the positive charge. As long as it's unambiguous, as long as it's clear, it's fine. This then takes us to the final structure, which we are going to show in full skeletal, just to be nice and consistent with this. So there we are. I've got carbons one, two, and three. There's carbon number four. I'm now going to have carbon number two with its bromine and carbon number three with its bromine, like so. Now, you might be looking at this and you might look at the version underneath and think to yourself, that's going to save me some time in the exam. I'm going to practice it that way. But even if you don't, remember what I said, being able to interpret what's going on and being able to draw them in both styles is excellent practice for revising the content, but also in preparation for the unexpected for what could come up in the exam. I do hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. Until next time, happy revising.